Hey guys, Stealth here. In this video I'm going to do a tank guide. And not the tank guide that I did earlier, you could call this tank guide part 2. And in this part I'm going to talk about the armor penetration. How exactly it does it work. Um, I will not be bothering you with a lot of formula, so don't worry too much about that. But what I will do is give you a lot of pointers on how exactly tank on tank warfare works, how it works best, and where to get started. Over here, I'm working with Flashpoint. We're not doing an actual battle. We're just testing the weapons, showing you guys what works. So Flashpoint, first of all, thanks very much for your help here. I have a bit of everything over here. I got an AMX-30B, which fires heat rounds. High explosive anti-tank. They're always going to do some damage. Then I got AMX-10RCs, 16 AP power, 40 point tanks. Very mobile. Challenger 1, Mark 3, heavily armored tank, 20 frontal armor, good AP power. You could call this a very, very high-end tank. And then there's the A, uh, the Sheridan, which has the Shillelagh missile and the M81 main gun, which also fires heat rounds. On the other side, I have Flashpoint with T55 AM2s with both main guns and the Bastion missile. He has a T72B OBR 1985, which has the Sphere, also an ATGM, and a main gun. Then some Chanma Hose and some other tanks. What we're going to do here is set these tanks up against each other to show you exactly what happens. We have our weapons turned off right now, so we're not engaging each other just yet. Tanks are both full health. Everything else is getting out of the way right now. I'm going to fire one shell. This is where uh, Flashpoint needs to move up to, so we can start this firing test. Okay, first up, we're going to fire one round at each tank. So he's going to fire, and I'm going to fire. Now we both fired. What happened is that my Challenger got hit once. It got hit for only one block of its health, as you can see below its name. It has 20 frontal armor, and it got hit by a gun that does 20 AP damage. So this thing had just enough power to penetrate the frontal armor. My Challenger 1 fires a 21 AP power projectile, going at a 20 frontal armor unit. So this one did manage to penetrate and do some damage. That's why I did two points of damage instead of just one as my challenger received. So at the maximum engagement range, if your AP power is as high as the defending AP value, you're not going to do a lot of damage. If it gets closer, if your tanks move in a little closer, then that is a completely different situation. Then the AP power becomes different, as you're going to see here. I'm pushing up my Challenger to about a half, uh, one and a half kilometer range, and I get hit again by the T-72B. Now I lose a lot more health. I lost three blocks of health because the kinetic power, and that's what the KE stands for, increases as your tank gets closer to its target. So the AP value of the main gun, which is 20 in this situation, that our armor penetration is going to be a little bit more as the range uh, gets smaller and smaller and smaller up to the range where a T55 or T72 can do massive damage to a Challenger 1 Mark III because it is getting too close. Now the same way um, or the same situation applies for my Challenger. If I fire you're going to see that this thing does a lot more damage and keep in mind this tank had two blocks of health left. I managed to shoot off three more so it only has half of its health left. If I would have been doing that from all the way out there, I would have had to fire about 10, maybe 12 shots, especially 12 if you keep accuracy in mind. The same would be said for the T-72B, because it could not really penetrate the frontal armor, it did only one damage at maximum range. So getting your tanks closer is actually quite effective here. And you can get closer by deploying a smokescreen. If he wanted to get closer to my tank, which for him would be favorable, he could deploy a smokescreen, push his tanks through the smokescreen. Um, he was going to get hit anyway, he's going to take damage anyway. But by getting closer, he could do a lot more damage to my Challenger 1 than he normally would. So that is when closing the distance between two tanks is actually very, very effective. Moving up to the next weapons test. 
pretty much point blank range. I'm not exactly sure, but I think this is 300 meters. It doesn't really happen that often in game. But you're going to see that my challenger, which only had, I think, six or seven blocks of health left, now has one. It barely survived. So, by now, the 20th point frontal armor of this tank is no longer sufficient to actually withstand the massive power that the T272 is now projecting onto it. Similarly, this tank has five blocks of health left, the T-72B. I'm going to return fire with my wounded challenger, and I'm going to kill it, because my AP value is slightly higher, or by now significantly higher, than the one of that T-72B can defend to. So, lesson here. Try to keep your tank, if it has more armor and better penetration values, at maximum range. You want to have that 20 to 75 meter range, because at that range, your tank stands a better chance of not taking that much damage. If you are the uh, tank with the lesser gun in this situation, like the T-72B was, it's a different situation. You want to make sure that you close the distance, otherwise you cannot really penetrate the Challenger, or whatever tank you're firing at. If you are not going to penetrate it, you might as well not engage it. And with some vehicles, you're going to see that even at their maximum range, they're not effective. Even at maximum range, if the AP value, so the defensive value of your tank is... Uh, sorry, if your offensive value of the tank, so your armor penetration power, if that power is lower than the frontal armor of the tank, you're going to see that the tank needs to close the distance. That is why sometimes when you're firing one weapon at another, it's going to say that the range is ineffective, or the weapon's ineffective, and you're going to see a white bar where it says this is the effective range. Your vehicle, or tank, or whatever gun you're going to fire it at, has to close into that range in order to be actually effective. Now the next text we're doing here is with an ATGM. This ATGM is the sphere, it has 22 armor penetration. It has a range of 26-25, so it's a lot more than your main gun, but it fires a heat projectile, which stands for high, en um, sorry, high explosive anti-tank, and that means it's always going to do some damage. That's the way it's scripted in this game. So I have a full health Challenger 1 Mark III. It does have 20 defensive value on the front. This missile has 22 armor penetration. See what happens. Missile comes in. It did do some damage, and it did two more than what my tank can stand. See, this missile fires an armor penetration of 22. My Challenger has 20 frontal armor, so 20 points of the 22 get absorbed, and two go into the actual vehicle, so two points of my health bar get destroyed. That is how this heat works. But it also works in another fashion, and we're going to demonstrate that a little later with an AMX-30B. Challenger is going to close in. We're going to repeat the firing test. It fired again, and again it only did two blocks of damage. That's because, regardless of the range, heat will always do the same amount of damage. So it will always do that two points, or in this situation, it will always do 22 points of damage. The Challenger, with the frontal armor, absorbed 20, and I again took 2 points of damage. Skipping this up to the next weapon test, I'm going to get my Challenger out of here. And I'm going to push up with a Sheridan. The Sheridan does not have a very, very good ATGM on it. It has a Shalali C, which has 16 armor penetration, versus 20 on this tank, so it should not go through. The thing with heat, though, is that it's always going to do some damage, as you're going to see. This tank is full health. It did hit, and now the tank has uh, 9 out of its 10 blocks left. That's because whatever you fire your heat missile or your heat round at, it's always going to do some damage. It'll not be a lot, that is, if it doesn't penetrate, so it, if, it, uh, if its armor penetration is lower than the defensive value of the tank, but it is always going to do some damage. So, eventually, if I had enough of these missiles, I could overwhelm the T-72B. But by that time, the T-72B will have probably killed all of my tanks already. 
So that is how a heat missile works. If it penetrates, it's going to do more damage than the defensive value. Like we saw in the Challenger, it fired a 22 armor penetration missile and it returned, or the Challenger absorbed 20 points and it did two. This is a different situation. This thing now has 22 armor penetration, but I'm only deploying three, sorry, two armor against it. So this missile is going to do effectively 20 points of damage to my Sheridan. Unfortunately for my poor Sheridan over here, it only has 10 hit points. So it's going to get destroyed. This because the armor penetration was a lot higher than the defensive value of my Sheridan. So I lost two points here, or my this missile effectively lost two points of its offensive value, and um, it was not that good. Um, <laughs> or at least it was not that good for my Sheridan here. Because it took a major hit. Now another tactic that you can use is using cheaper tanks and some of these still fire heat rounds although most of the higher end tanks fire kinetic rounds. This AMX 30B is one of the last or one of the few units that still fire heat rounds from its main gun, the F1. And with it I'm always going to do some damage. So eventually the 30B with its main gun could take down the T72B. That is, if these French guns are any good because the first two rounds, I believe, will miss the target. AMX gets in position. Main weapon on. 50% accuracy. Miss. Landed right there. Fires again. At least the French are consistent. It missed again, pretty much exactly at the same position. Now, before this thing hit, it has 9 hit points. That's important to know. Finally, I hit the target, and it only did 1 point of damage. The armor penetration of the 30B is 9. The defensive value of this tank is 20, so it did not pen. But it did do some damage. And this is why some of the recoilless rifles, which don't exactly have a very high armor penetration value, can still be effective in-game. They can still always do damage, and with it you can still have effective vehicles which are seemingly extremely outdated, like recoilless rifles. Next up, we're going to do a flanking maneuver, or at least that's what we're going to try. I have two of these AMX-10 RC-5Bs, or SBs. They are very maneuverable tanks, they got 16 armor penetration. That means that in order to penetrate this tank, they cannot be at maximum range. Otherwise, the kinetic projectile, so the shell from the AMX-10, is not going to penetrate this tank. What I need to do is either try to flank this unit, where I'm only shooting at a 10th point side armor, or I'm going to have to try to close the distance. And that's what we're trying to do here. You can see that this tank now has two units to defend itself against and normally a tank will turn its hull towards the biggest target. Apparently it thinks that this tank is now the biggest target because you can see that the front of the hull, this side of frontal armor, which is the most defensive value on the tank, 20 points, is armored or is pointed towards this AMX-10. This AMX-10 might get a side shot on this tank. I'm going to slow this down. An advantage that this T-72B also has is that it's sitting still. So it does has 50% accuracy plus whatever bonus points it can get from range and veterancy. The AMX-10 RC does not have this advantage. It does have good accuracy, but it does not have a stabilizer. So I have to park this thing in order to have it fire its main gun. T-72B fires. It missed. I fired my gun, which did KE damage, and it did one point of damage to this tank. That's because at this range it is barely enough. This is not the maximum range though, but it's close. It's the maximum range at which this gun can actually penetrate, otherwise it wouldn't even fire. This AMX-10 is now in a pretty good position, because if we're going to move up to the T-72B, you're going to see that I'm engaging it on this side of the armor. This side armor or side skirts are two, 10 points uh, of armor. So this unit 
if it penetrates, can actually do 6 points of damage because the main gun fires 16 armor penetration the armor is going to absorb 10 and it should mean that I do 6 points, or sorry, 4 points of damage uh, no, 6 points of damage of course unfortunately though, my tank missed this allows the T-72B to take out my other RC you can see that it explodes here this tank instantly turns its main hull towards the new threat and suddenly I'm presented with 20 frontal armor. This means that my tank will suddenly stop to fire, try to close the distance because I cannot penetrate this tank. In the meanwhile the T-72B is just casually sitting there trying to kill my French tank. And now, finally over there, which is a lot closer than this unit was, I can actually do some damage again. And I believe that this one did another one point of damage. So flanking maneuvers can be effective, but make sure that you have more units, a little bit higher in armor penetration, and that you're engaging this tank from as many angles as possible. If you were to engage it from, for example, a tank over there, one over there, and one over there, there's a good chance that one of those tanks is going to get the rear of this T-72B. And the rear of the tank is always the weakest part. It only has five pen armor penetration on the rear, or armor defense on the rear. So with that, the chances of me penetrating this rear of the tank are a lot better. And that makes it much, much more interesting to try and get the rear of a tank. It's also why when you're retreating a tank, you want to do it in reverse. Because with that, you're going to keep the strongest part of the armor, which is this part, towards the enemy. If I were to retreat the T-72B across this bridge, I would do it in reverse. Because there are still targets here. If I were to just right-click here the tank would turn around, go towards the road, and then point its nose that way and go the way that I tell it to go. Exposing the rear of the armor. Which means that um, if an anti-GM plane came in or a helicopter managed to get a shot at this thing, it would have a very, very high chance of getting destroyed. If, however, the missile hit the front armor of the tank, the tank would stand a much, much better chance of surviving. Now we're going to move up to the next test. Setting up these tests takes a bit of time, so be patient here. We're now going to do a forest test, which is where you have two tanks that enc encounter each other at very, very close range. You can see that this is a T-55. It's an AM-2. It will not try to use its HGM at short range, because it's not effective. It will use the main gun, but the main gun has 15 points of armor penetration. My Challenger has 20 points, as we established earlier. So, the AFT-55 is going to have to get very, very close to the Challenger in order to do some damage. Luckily for the T-55, there's a forest in the way that my Challenger cannot see through. So, only when these tanks are almost on top of each other, they can see each other and fire at each other. And this situation is majorly in the advantage of the T-55. Because this is only a 55-point vehicle, which normally would not pose a threat to the Challenger. Not even with its Bastion missile, which cannot do that much damage. It can do 17 AP damage, but even at maximum range or shorter range, which doesn't matter for heat, it's not going to penetrate the armor, so it's only going to do one point of damage. So the Challenger from this tank usually has nothing to fear, if this Challenger were firing at main range, at 2275. If it gets closer, the situation becomes different. We enabled the guns and we put these guys on attack move, so we're going to meet each other in the middle of the forest. We're moving up. They spot each other. T-55 fires slightly before the Challenger can respond. But this Challenger now took four points of damage. So the main gun of the T-55 penetrated 20 points of frontal armor due to its very very low range. That's when the kinetic power of this gun increases very, very much. I'm not going to bother you with the formula. I don't even know it. I could look it up for you if you wanted to. Um, but what you need to know is that the closer these tanks get, the more their armor penetration uh, values get. So the more their AP power goes up. That's why this T-55 was now able to penetrate the Challenger. The Challenger, of course, also gets this bonus, and the armor penetration power of this tank will also go up quite a bit.
So it's going to return fire and instantly destroys the T-55. But for me, if I was fighting in this forest using my Challenger, I would go, okay, he only has to do that with two or three tanks and my Challenger's dead. And my Challenger cannot engage that many tanks at the same time. It does have a decent reload of eight rounds a minute. It does have decent accuracy. But it only has to start being panicked or being flanked by infantry combined with tanks. And this Challenger is in a lot of trouble. So this is something that you really need to be careful with. If you're using, for example, Russia, you can use this tactic, where you have a forest and enemy tanks, to push T-72s, the cheap 45-point vehicles, through this forest. That would be a very effective cover for your tank, making it so that if they encounter a heavy tank like the Challenger 1 Mark III, they can still do a lot of damage to it. And keep in mind, you can get three, maybe even four T-72s for the same price as one Challenger. So it is definitely worth getting more tanks if you are doing close quarter warfare like this. So that concludes this video. It is um, not completely um, into the math of the whole thing. I wanted to save you from that. If you need to, there, sorry, there's only basically a couple of things you need to remember here. One, try to engage tanks at maximum range only if your armor value, so your defensive value, is enough to withstand the shell that the enemy tank can fire. If it's not, you might as well close in and try to get your gun to do more damage. That's the test that we saw initially with the T-72 OBR 1989 and the Challenger 1 Mark III. In this situation, the Challenger 1 Mark III was at an advantage because its armor was higher than the armor penetration that the, the T-72 could do to me. Then, as the tanks closed in, the damage increased. So that was at the um, expense of my Challenger and in favor of the T-72. Having that makes it so that if you have a tank which does not have the armor penetration value to go through your intended target, you're going to need to get closer. You can do that through forests, by using uh, blocks of towns as cover, or of course by deploying smoke screens. Second thing you need to remember, Heat rounds always do some damage, regardless of their target. Heat rounds are pretty easy um, math-wise. If they penetrate, they're going to do damage. If they don't penetrate, they're always going to do one point of damage. That's basically what you need to remember. It's with the T-72-1989 that fired that sphere missile. It penetrated the front armor of the Challenger, doing two uh, sorry, neutralizing 20 points of armor on the Challenger and doing 2 points of damage. That's how you need to keep these things in perspective. Flanking is the third thing you need to remember. If you can get to avoid the 20 frontal armor on a tank, or at least the frontal armor, and get shots on the side, the rear, or the top, so a cluster bomb is going to engage the top of the vehicle, you're always going to do some damage and the chances of you penetrating the sides or the rear are a lot higher than penetrating the front because that's where the most effective armor is. If you can remember those three things in your tank warfare you have a major advantage over the enemy. Always consider can I penetrate this? If not I need to get closer. Can my tank, can my tank take these shells? If yes, good, stay at range. If not, get closer. Does this unit fire a heat or a kinetic profile or projectile? If it's heat, it doesn't really matter what range you are at. If it's kinetic, um, it's always going to do some damage if the armor penetration is as high as the defensive value. If it's not, it's not going to do any damage and you need to get closer. And the game will tell you this. It's going to say range ineffective. You need to get closer. With that, that's the end of the video. I hope you found this useful and I hope it explained to you exactly how these things work. I know if you want to have the math, you can look those up in the forums, but I did not want to bother you with that. If you like this video, please hit like and if you want to see more of my guides, I have a ton of them already on Wargame Red Dragon to help you get to understand this game better. Link to those guides are in the description down below. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.